Uh, today, we've got some cracking displays for you, and I hope you're going to get the team some uh, encouragement. Uh, feel free to throw your RF in the army when the race is in the Royal Navy, if you don't mind. Uh, displays today, we've got some guys dressed in green, brought the majority of them along, and they're going to give you a good demonstration shortly. Uh, after that, we've got some Royal Marines who are going to show you what it's like to beat each other up. Uh, following that, we've got our young Seagonets are going to come up with their field gun and show you what they can do. Uh, later on, we'll then have a field gun display by the Royal Navy team. Um, so that's the time for just plenty of encouragement and some food. We've also got some bands on today, and we've also got a uh, part that will give you some better decisions on later on today. So I hope you enjoy the afternoon. Thank you for coming down. I'll hand it over now to Mark Officer Joe Sims from 75 Royal Engineers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, just start with some history about these guys and girls here that are going to do a lot of hard work. Seven Farm Engineer, an Army Reserve Unit, covering some 296 Reserve personnel with a regular handsman of 91 regular soldiers with a combined strength of 387 soldiers. Seven Farm Engineer comes under the Command of 8 Force Engineer Brigade. The regiment has a unique role within defence as we provide amphibious and logistic bridging, as you can see. Nobody else provides a wide water gap crossing in the British Army. We are the only Royal Engineer, commonly known as Sappers, based in the northwest of England. Our Army Reserve centres are based in Warrington, Cheshire, Birkenhead, Merseyside, Bellswood, Manchester. The regimental headquarters are, as you now well established and sent to the barracks, Warrington and command under Cheshire Garrison. As you can tell, currently in service is the medium girder overbridge, or MGOP, as you can see. This is a module bridging kit that is produced by Ferry Engineering and has been in service with Royal Engineers since 1971, so it has seen a lot of action. The bridge set is set is a lightweight air uh, portable, uh, lifted basically, and in the five bay, five bay MGOB constructor today as a vehicle load capacity of a wheeled 100 ton track, 70 tons it can hold. Basically, the bridge itself is an overbridge, is a method of reinforcing an existing bridge that might have been damaged or simply not have the required carrying capacity. Covering craters or reinforced culverts, for example, a series of wedges are used to create a distinctive hub with limited deflection when carrying heavy vehicles. So then the main goal is designed to be constructed by a single engineer field section, as you can see, in less than 30 minutes, and has been a widely used extensively over operations worldwide. Section commander is in charge then. Okay, it's Corporal Ellis, give us a, give us a wave at us. Okay, seven days. Corporal Cornell, give us a shake of hands, Cornell. This has been eight years. Okay, health and safety is his prime role out of civilian man. Okay, so we'll go into the building sequence. The back seat beam is placed in position on two pieces of set through the back, and as you can see, this keeps the beam clear of the ground and allows for the weight under load to be transferred down through each end of the beam as designed. Sometimes quite difficult for them, but they've done well there. Once tilted the vaccine beam, you will be noticed each team on each side of the bridge places base plates under the recently installed bridging panel. This is to give it ground clearance to fit the next series of panels and the first set of wedges. Okay, 
It's not just simply shoving it in, heaving and lifting and working as a team. Now on the way to the end of bay two is taken by the team and the locking bolts between one and two are removed to allow the first set of wedges to be fitted. Once the wedges are in the base plate, moves to the end of bay two. Bay three is fitted with the locking bolts and pins and the base plate is removed. surveyors, students from universities, quite well educated. Bay 4 is fitted. At this point you will see that the team will get their hands around one side of the bridge at a time. This is due to the fact that fatigue is now setting in. Each component weighs a shape under 200 kilograms. So each soldier will be lifting approximately 50 kilograms or 120 pounds in the old money. But also, each side of the bridge is a weight is approximately weighing 800 kilograms. Move the base plate further back and go for position of the fifth bow. The last bay, bay five is now brought in and fitted as normal. The base plate stays under bay four whilst the locking bolts are removed and the final set of wedges are fitted. As you can well see, this should be fitted well within 30 minutes and be used in the operational areas as Afghanistan, Iraq, Bosnia, Kosovo. And uh, as mentioned, it can be airlifted and positioned by helicopter. Base plates have now been moved to Bay Farm and the banks have been used for getting fitted to the home set against 75mm packing to take pressure. This can take a couple of minutes due to the type of ground, the orientation, the base itself. With effort and expertise, it goes to the final back seat and go in. Anybody on this? 
sometimes the bridge can be affected with weather conditions, it's hot, so the quality can expand. So sometimes you've got to bear with it when you get problems, you just work on the problems. Bear with it. If you use this method, because you can tell to break the bridge and pull it to get the wedges in. Doing an extra drill nights, okay, to make sure their drills are slick. Some things don't go to plan, but you just bear with it. Almost there now, we've got Sapper doing the uh, banging now. It doesn't move, just jump on it and it goes in. Just give a round of applause, that'll be great. So now we're moving on to the left-hand side of the bridge. Okay, they'll do the same. As I said, weather can affect it. So you have to use other tactics, engineering tactics, and to come up with different ideas. So here we go. In the next we have seven home ramps coming in. They were brought in and fitted to the outside of the back seat beam. As you can tell, each one of the teams will take control with one person shouting. Command and control is key. Do not miss time of hit. Our bridging capability as well. No British Army can go without us and we come up to a gap. Okay, the engineers will be brought forward under the reconnaissance. Okay, we'll measure the gap and put in the bridge. The bridge is secure, the engineers will move forward to secure it and let the whole British Army move on and move forward to move on to the next gap. Little fatigue is setting in with the guys because it is heavy equipment. If you want to show a pause of hands, I'd appreciate you getting going. Okay, now the ramp set in, I'll move four beats of ramp, okay, to go ready to be moved in. Guided into the section commander, Corporal Ellis, show him a hand of applause. Itself. It is quite key that they move quickly and we need to get the bridge in as soon as possible. 
And again, one person will take control of each panel. It's important to have health and safety at all times, keep the back straight, okay, keep control of the panel is key. night drill night training okay that be weapon training bridging water supply demolitions we cover and a variety of skills these girls and lads that are cover on Tuesday night training anytime you're thinking of uh, sort of coming to our running center in our TA center please do it if it goes to blind edge you can see the bridge goes in quite fast but we do get problems the main thing with the bridge, if we get problems, do not brush it like any job. Find out the um, what's going wrong with it and just drop it in. Training and um, we have PSI parents, staff instructors um, that look after the um, reserves. Okay, and they're in there doing all the day work, the admin work for the reserves. Okay, because obviously we can't move without them overlooking our training. So it's not just the reserves turning up on the Tuesday night and we can train. We have regular PSIs that look after us. Okay, the team is setting in. Second pieces in. With the fatigue setting in, okay, we might take things a little bit slower so we don't get our soldiers injured, but as you can tell, fatigue is setting in, so get behind them again. So with the decking of the last seven ramps coming in, brought in a place on the far bank, okay, which I'm standing on the enemy side. Obviously they're nearly there but not quite finished. So get a round of applause, let's get them going because they're slowing up. Thank you. 
and when the last curve is in place, back to the home back and line up for the next pass. As you can tell, this is a third sort of foot car, okay, they're quite easy to fit in. What we need to watch is make sure we are hooked on before we let go, because we have experience of dropping into the water. Sometimes we have to send sappers into the water to recover them. They're probably the most important part of the bridge and curving. We've got to be guided out by the sappers. The last thing we want is a tank driving up then breaking. Give a round of applause! Oh. Just up the uh, timings there, okay? Remember, they've got 30 minutes to get it in in the books, and these ladies and gents did it in 17 and a half minutes. Let's give them a round of applause. Again, if you wish to sort of lock into it, roll in. And, uh, please do so. As you can tell, it's a quick strip out. It should be able to be quicker than 17 minutes. Again. Thanks very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that you all enjoyed that display by 7th uh, Well, engineers, nice round of applause for the guys as they do get the stance, please.